Hey guys, welcome back to Flex and Freedom. You're with Arne and John again. Um, we are in Belfast on this beautiful sunny Sunday. We're just at Harland and Wolf, the place where Titanic was built. A uh, pretty renowned spot around here. Um, we're going to chat to you a wee bit about our experiences last week, where the weather contrasted a wee bit to this. And we were tackling the North Coast 500. Um, so we're going to just give you a rundown of do's and don'ts that we learnt the hard way. folks so John here um, and I guess uh, the number one thing that we picked up from Scotland last week was accommodation and if sp specifically if you're planning to do the North Coast 500 obviously it's 500 miles around the whole North Coast that's pretty that's pretty obvious but what we done was we booked a central location and we traveled out each day and done segments or quadrants of the North Coast 500 each day that was mainly due to COVID restrictions um, and prices and trying to keep costs at a minimum Obviously, if you're going to do it, my recommendation or our recommendation is book, se book separate um, uh, places to stay across the route. So, like, everyone starts at Inverness usually and does it sort of anti clockwise, covering the east coast, which is what most people think is the worst in terms of view and scenery, uh, and then just dot them across. So, that would be number one is book separate locations um, for your accommodation across the whole north coast it reduces the amount of time pressure you're under you can plan your day better if you do come into a bad spot of weather you know you only have to get from point a to b and then plan the rest of your day from there or weather so uh, yeah um, book different uh, points for your accommodation across the whole route would be my number one my number one tip uh, so i'm going to lead with the don'ts um, and for me the first don't we came across on the first evening was don't be afraid to change your plans so um, we underestimated the elements and the distance to be traveled on the first day and we stopped 80 miles short of where our accommodation was and i have to say it's probably one of the best decisions we made all, all weekend um, so you know you got to just ride to the conditions and ride to how you're feeling so if you're feeling really good the weather's good and all make the most of it um, if the weather's up against you or you're not feeling it don't risk it just uh, park up either take in some scenes or grab some of the good food about the place okay folks so my second piece of advice is do invest in quality gear uh, clothing um, I bought a rain suit off of a sports bike shop an RST rain suit I'll drop the link for you um, 50 quid wasn't great done the job or so I thought but the torrential rain of Scotland and the adverse weather conditions that we faced it just wasn't up to scratch um, I have warm weather leather riding gloves which within 30 minutes uh, my fingers were absolutely numb uh, pro tip uh, we were using disposable gloves underneath our gloves to try and like add layers uh, to keep our fingers warm because we found breaking and clutching was just so difficult so do invest do buy real top of the line quality waterproof boots do buy a really really good uh, uh, rain suit and uh, cold weather riding gloves um, a guy that was with us Kevin had really high quality grade gloves made all the difference his experience was totally different to ours because our hands were freezing so do invest in quality gear uh, guys just off the back of that one i'm going to say don't trust the weather app um, or ne don't necessarily rely on it um, if you're like us you know some of the days we were traveling i think our biggest day we traveled 370 miles in one day um, and to put that into perspective for anyone sort of local watching the video you know uh, mid Ulster to Cork is about 270 miles so we're covering a brave bit of distance you're going through past many cities stuff like that um, so obviously you're going to run into different weather conditions as you go so even if it's nice and sunny when you're setting off if you have saddlebags or backpack with you throw some layers in there um, and just be prepared for the weather to change because we all know weather in the UK and Ireland as well isn't the most predictable and the forecast does quite often let you down guys another big point to consider if you're doing the north coast 500 is, is time 
you need to realize very quickly what it is you want out of the North Coast 500 if it's for sightseeing are you going to be stopping off at all the attractions or is it going to be about getting the miles in so obviously if you're on the bikes there's some great roads up there um, I mean we covered the whole North Coast 500 in just under four days uh, it was it was time sensitive uh, some days were a bit of a slog about just getting the miles in so if you want to do it to see all the points of interest and all the stops and the, the tourist uh, locations and things then you really will be looking at probably a minimum of seven days um, you know there's guys doing camper vans in a week or two weeks and things and making it really a bit of a staycation that was never our intention so these do's and don'ts are based on a very very compressed program but yeah you need to understand am i in it to do sightseeing or is it about just getting the miles in uh, it's 500 miles four days not a problem uh, if you want to stop off uh, it's gonna you're probably looking at a week to 10 days but i'm i would have thought so third don't guys um don't miss out on all the beautiful food that uh, the local businesses have to offer um hey guys the uh the fish and chips in Scotland is just next level. No matter where you come from, I think you'll appreciate it. Um, the beautiful inn at Applecross. Um, they have a lovely wee fish and chips stall outside at the minute. Um, I think it's partly due to COVID regulations, but well worth checking out. And up at John O'Groats there as well, there's a beautiful cafe. And uh, they do these awesome tray bakes. Um, I think they're called Bakes by Megan. Um, so worth checking out. I think she has an Instagram page there too. And in terms of, you know, accessories and things to bring along, uh, luggage, baggage, whatever, um, we're obviously in Harleys. Uh, Arne has got a, a saddlebag there from Enshuyo from Italy. I had ordered the exact same one and I ran into difficulties and didn't get it in time for the trip. So I had to backpack it. Um, not ideal whenever you've got well we did 1300 and something miles so not ideally whenever you're wearing a backpack that's absolutely filled with clothing and whatever other bits and pieces you need for the entire trip so um, saddlebags are so important I've got a newfound love for saddlebags um, Arn had one it just made his trip far more enjoyable it's such a minor thing but it really did add a lot to it so saddlebags definitely um, and if you are backpacking it I mean waterproof backpack um, I had a waterproof shield for my backpack within half an hour of riding. Scotland had ruined it and uh, yeah my, my clothes inside were a bit damp as well so backpack it, saddlebags, if, if you're backpacking it have some sort of plastic bags inside your backpack keep your clothes dry and your electronics and stuff but saddlebags are king when it comes to the North Coast 500. So folks those are some of just the, the main points of being iron come across whenever we were on our trip but I mean it's not to say other people didn't have different experiences and whatever as well um, overall the North Coast 500 was a good trip we really enjoyed it it was my first proper road trip you know overnight style road trip so it was really really good and I thoroughly enjoyed it we did have two stinkers off days on the Friday and the Monday both going there and coming home but the days sandwiched in between were really really good the views are incredible. I mean, Apple Cross uh, ticked that off the list. That was unbelievable. If you go and check out our Instagram for some of those photographs and things, they're just photographs just don't do it justice. So definitely check out Apple Cross and also um, again John O'Groats just because it's so iconic and everyone goes there to get a photograph with a, a sign. But yeah, I would I would definitely recommend doing something like that again. Um, it's quiet at the moment because people are just starting to get back into the groove with traveling in terms of COVID and everything else. It will probably get busier. Um, so if you are thinking about it, yeah, definitely jump on. But um, maybe try and get some dry weather because we got saturated. But yeah. But guys, that's uh, pretty much it from us today. Um, hopefully if you're planning on doing the North Coast 500, um, that has been of help to you. Um, if you've done it before already, I'm sure you may be able to relate to some of the points. 
but um, we're going to shoot on now. Um, John's going to work his magic and get this video up shortly. Um, stay tuned, and you know we have a stage three upgrade video coming in soon. My bike's booked in. Party Davis in Belfast. Um, so really, really excited about that. Weather permitting, if it's as good as this, going to get it broke in probably the day I get it, and then hopefully be able to really open it up and experience it. And we'll record my first reaction to that. Um, so thanks again for tuning in with us. Pleasure as always. Um, and we shall be in touch soon. So take care. Peace out.